Hello, my name is Patrick Usher, and in this video I am going to be discussing why I think that limbic system impairment um, is not just the cause for POTS syndrome as a whole and the main problems to do with net deficiency, but it's also actually what causes the subset uh, known uh, of POTS patients known as mast cell activation uh, subset, okay, mast cell activation problems subset. And... Um, this doesn't affect uh, everyone with POTS, it affects quite a few people though, and basically what it is is that in contrast to MCAD, which is mast cell activation disorder, which is a genetic problem which people have from birth, a lot of people with POTS have MCAS, which is a mast cell activation problems, uh, but it's, it's a mast cell activation syndrome. In other words, there's no sort of known cause for it at this moment in time. And it mimics MCAD, but it's not genetic, okay? So a lot of people with POTS have that, or a fair number, and the thing about it is this that um, the MCAS problems are basically they're an allergic response, okay? And they're usually an allergic response to food, uh, but they can also happen at other times. So I'll just get a little, a little note I have about that. Um, da -dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. So um, they can happen at various, at various times. This is something that, that Professor Raj has said in, in a summary article he did, which is very good, pulling together lots of different aspects of POTS. Professor Raj works on dysautonomia. And he said that um, MCS problems can be triggered by long-term standing, exercise, premenstrual cycle, meals, and sexual intercourse. Okay, so um, those are all things that can kind of increase it. Meals very common. People tend to develop allergic reactions to foods uh, in POTS. And it's a very kind of unpleasant feeling. Uh, I believe that I had mast cell activation problems. I, I don't know for sure because I never diagnosed with anything, actually. Uh, because I was going to get a test done in June of 2015, uh, or rather I was going to go to a POTS consultant. Dublin has one of them. I was going to go to that person, uh, but then I started to get so much better using the dynamic neural retraining system that I cancelled it. So anyway, I never got diagnosed with anything. But uh, the thing is this, uh, the thing is this, so that MCS things tend, MCAS problems tend to happen following food, as an example. Um, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling, and I believe I had this. Um, if I remember correctly, basically it felt like my whole body shut down, became very hot. It was absolutely awful feeling. Absolutely awful. Like nothing seemed to work. And I was stuck in bed, literally it would be all night or after a meal during the afternoon, and I was bunched. That's what it felt like. And eventually after three or four hours it would pass, but it was horrible. So I especially have reactions to kind of richer foods, spices, uh, fruits like prunes, um, anything like that, sugar, uh, alcohol, I mean I don't know that I really had alcohol but, but a few times leading up to my sort of major explosion in health problems in early 2015 I'd have alcohol and this would happen and it was very very unpleasant. I still don't have alcohol anyway but that's another point altogether. Now, so um, basically this is an allergic response, histamine is what is kind of implicated what's involved in mast cell activation problems. And basically, you know, like for example, if you're stung by a bee under normal circumstances, you have a mast cell response, okay, to the bee. Um, your histamine is released to, to counteract the allergic thing that the bee may be causing you, okay. But the problem with mast cell activation is that you're getting this release of histamine all the time. Uh, or in response, not all the time, but in response to certain triggers that really shouldn't be giving it to you. Um, one of the people who, 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 who contributed uh, a testimonial to the book I've put out, uh, a lady called Jared, uh, she used to have desperate mast cell activation problems. Um, so there's actually there's a video somewhere on YouTube of her um, from when she had a mast cell activation problem. And it was called something like, she put it up, but it was called something like crazy, crazy mast cell response. Uh, something like that. Anyway, but it's a video of her shaking, visibly shaking, and not being able to speak because she had some grape juice. Okay, so her mast cell activation problems were extreme, much more extreme than what I experienced if I experienced mast cell activation problems. So it can happen uh, with POTS patients; it can be very severe, and it's essentially an allergic response gone wrong. Now, why would this happen? Is my question to you. Now, basically, the way I look at it is this. If the limbic system goes into crisis, and this adrenaline is being released all the time, the sympathetic 
branch of the nervous system is active all the time. This means that everything is in a state of higher crisis, not just in the brain, but in the whole body. If everything is in a, sta is in a state of higher crisis, does it not stand to reason that we would have an increased tendency towards allergic reactions? Okay. I believe it does stand to, tend uh, t it does stand to reason, and uh, not the only one, because Professor Rash, whom I just mentioned, actually in that same article from 2008, I think it was, anyway, it's online, it's a summary of all the findings into POTS, uh, he does pose the question whether sympathetic activation through the release of norepinephrine is actually the cause of mast cell activation. That's quoting him. So um, he thinks that, I think that, um, it makes sense that a heightened and hypervigilant nervous system uh, would lead to everything being overtaxed, everything being hypervigilant, everything uh, potentially c can, can go wrong, and that would include the mast cell response. So it makes sense that therefore that things that would normally give you an allergic reaction, such as grape juice, um, will do under these circumstances. So that's my thought on that. Um, I believe it does explain the mass cell activation problems. I think it needs to be spelled out in a way that only a researcher can do, uh, in a more substantial way, but it makes sense. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, there's another video on this channel, by the way, which explains why there are aldosterone and sodium retention problems as a result, I believe, of limbic system impairment as well. Those two problems lead to the low blood volume, primarily, that you see in POTS patients. So, you see, it does explain, it can explain a lot of things, uh, which is very important to, 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 to know. Um, so it's not just explaining the key thing, which is net protein deficiency, but it can explain other key findings as well. But I go into this also in book, in chapter three of the book. Anyway, that's enough of that. Thank you very much.